Hi everyone and welcome to the Robbins Center on the campus of the University of Richmond for our Atlantic 10 women's basketball preview with the Spiders. I'm Bob Black. This is Spider first year head coach Aaron Roussel, but nothing first year about his coaching experience. He comes to the Spiders after seven highly successful seasons at Bucknell, particularly the recent history. Aaron, the last four years with four postseason appearances and 100 victories, a couple of NCAA appearances, and now the move to Richmond. What have you kind of found from this first Spider team? You were very successful at turning things around relatively quickly at Bucknell. I'm not trying to put any yeah. pressure on you, <laughs> but I know you want to win as quickly as you can. What have you seen from this group? Just an eager bunch. You know, I think they've been in the gym quite a bit. You know, we've talked a lot about commitment and the word commitment and, and making sure that this is, you know, it doesn't have to be your number one priority, but this is something that we want to prioritize. And um, I, I think the hunger and desire to be a a really strong basketball program to be a better team uh, is very apparent and I think we're, we're we are eager as a staff to, to see that. What's the style of play that Spider fans will enjoy watching here in the Robins Center? Yeah I mean we got to get there you know I think when when we were you know kind of putting this offense together it you know puts a high premium on shooting the basketball mm -hmm. that's something we really struggled with uh, this past season and maybe the last couple seasons so that's something we're really trying to improve on get ourselves in the gym we talked about the word commitment and, and all of that Hopefully it's improving on our shooting and some of that shot selection. We'd like to play as fast as we can. You know, I think we really chart, hey, how many times can we score in that first five, six seconds? Hmm. We want to play fast, um, but that's going to require us, um, you know, figuring some things out. You know, we, we talk a lot about making sure that we're a really, really strong uh, rebounding team. Another thing that we struggled with last year. So I think if we can rebound the ball better and we can make shots, then hopefully we can put some points on the board. All right. That having been said, uh, who's kind of opened your eyes a little bit? I know all of the players were new to you. Some of them yeah. you may have had a little bit of familiarity with from recruiting and that sort of thing. But who's kind of opened your eyes a little bit? You know, I think when, when you're when you're coming into the job, you kind of start to look at some veterans, you know, and I think with, with mm -hmm. Alex and with Jade, they've been around the block quite a bit, you know, and I think I don't want to say surprise because you kind right. of have some heightened expectations for them. I think they've been very, very good. You know, Jade as a leader is one of the best I've ever been around. Alex just really, really steady, very, very um, cerebral basketball player. And, and both those two really work hard. So I think they really kind of set the tone, um, but been impressed with that sophomore class. You know, I think they, uh, you know, it, Without being here last year, you don't always know the situation, but uh, when you get freshmen that get experience, I think a lot of things change during their fresh, or from their freshman to their sophomore year. Uh, Claire Holt, been in the gym quite a bit, uh, getting shots up. I think she's really improved as a shooter. Uh, Emma Squires, same thing. You know, She battled some injuries last year, but I think we'd like to see uh, her being healthy and hopefully helping mm -hmm. us out on the court. How much do you know about the Atlantic 10, what you've seen? I know in the past you've probably played some in non-conference action. What are you expecting from this league and what it's going to take for the Spiders to be successful yeah, in it? Obviously, we, we've played against a, a lot of them, so you mm -hmm. kind of get that interaction with it. Um, you know, kind of being a somewhat peer league, you know, at least maybe a league that we we're kind of trying to aspire mm -hmm. to in the Patriot League, you always kept tabs on it. You know? yeah. So I think it was, a, it was a group last year that, you know, just had a lot of new coaches over the last few years and, and some really young players. So maybe down um, from what maybe they were expecting uh, last year. But <laughs> you look across the board and, you know, some really good coaches. And I think just some young teams last year, I mean, some more experienced teams this coming season. So it's, it's going to be a battle. And, uh, but that's something we're excited about. I'm sure one of the things that attracted you was this beautiful facility yeah. that you will play your home games in in the Robbins Center. But now you've got the added bonus because there's another facility being built that I know will be advantage for you as well. Huge and I think that's a huge thing with recruiting. I think the recruiting um, feedback that we've gotten mm -hmm. overall has been awesome. You know I think that's something you're always a little bit uneasy about but uh, I think from from players, from pro, from potential players, from coaches, everything's been great. And yeah, you, you all of a sudden dangle that, hey, we're also moving into a, a brand new practice facility, completely state of the art, or something we're obviously very, very excited about. You know, talk about that commitment uh, for our players. It'll help them to kind of get in the gym a little bit more. But I think it really resonates the, with us when you see the commitment and the, and the uh, commitment to the resources that our administration and, and our donors are putting out there for us. Quilly Athletic Center is scheduled to open just about a year from right now, but let's not let's not jump ahead. Go have a great first year with the uh, Spiders. We look forward to watching your team play here in the Robin Center. Aaron. We got to get back to the Robin Center. Yeah. I know we're on the road here yes. quite a bit early, um, and I think that that can be a good thing. You know, as, as a basketball coach, you never want to be. You never want to be away from home too often, and that wasn't by design. Um, but I think when you started looking at it, it was we knew this was kind of how it was going to have to be this this year, and, and maybe even a little bit into next. Um, but at the same point, this is a group that we weren't very successful uh, on mm -hmm. the road last year, so that's a huge test for us. We need to learn how to win on the road, and when you're successful, you know, the, the really good teams win at home. 
but you got to figure out a way to get some things done on the road. And I think this is a group that understands that and uh, looking forward to around that journey with them. Yeah, I think it's 10 of the first 13 away from the Robin Center. Is, so, it that, is it that bad? Yeah, but, so uh, when but, you have the opportunity, you need to get to the Robin <laughs> Center and see Coach Russell Spiders in action, right? Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Thank you. All right, thanks, Coach. And don't forget the Atlantic 10 tournament. If you want to look ahead a little bit, first round games will be on campus sites and then the quarters, semifinals, and championship game at the University of Dayton. But a lot of good women's basketball to be played between now and then. Come out and see the Spiders at the Robin Center. And got a couple of Richmond Spiders student athletes to tell us a little bit about this edition of the Spiders. On my far left is Jade Hines Clark, the senior, and then to my immediate left is Alex Park Parson, the Spider Junior. A couple of veteran, experienced leaders for the Richmond Spiders. So let's start right there, ladies, and what that phrase means, Jade, to you. Veteran, experienced leader. To me, that means just being a force, whether it's on the court um, or in the community, just making sure that you know, I'm leading in a way that um, not only helps my teammates, but allows me to continue to grow. Alex, same question. What does that phrase mean to you? Experienced and being a veteran leader. Exactly the same thing, you know, just being out there, being vocal, doing everything I can to help my teammates out, whether it's on the court, off the court, and, you know, just doing everything I can to the best of my ability. How comfortable are you with that role, or is it something that you had to kind of grow into? I, it was definitely something I had to grow into. I think I'm getting better at it, improving every day. And, um, you know, I've talked to Coach Roussel. He's pulled us aside and said, hey, you're the leaders of this team, you know, we need a little more out of you. And so I'm just hmm. continuing to better myself at that position. Jade, how do you balance that with just being a good, solid basketball player to make sure you're taking care of what you do best for the team, but also to be comfortable in that leader role? Uh, I think continuously holding myself accountable um, first is huge. Like I was thinking about it the other day, like when we have conditionings and um, general court workouts, like I have to do the things that I'm expecting um, our other players to be doing. So if I'm tired and I put my hand on my knees, then I should expect that everybody else is going to do that. Um, so trying to stray away and do the little things um, that will make an impact and making sure that I'm holding myself accountable first before I try to hold anybody else. I really don't like to use the word surprise when I talk to players or coaches because you're the inner circle of the program. You're probably not that surprised by too much. But who has kind of opened your eyes a little bit from the practices you've seen, whether it's a newcomer or maybe somebody who's come back bigger and better than before? Who has kind of opened your eyes on this team? And I think Claire and Emma have been phenomenal in just like emphasizing that we need to be in the gym. Um, Claire actually started a breakfast club where uh, teammates will come early in the morning to get some shots up, work on some things that we've been doing um, in our practices. So I think overall the sophomore class has just really like taken it up a notch and it's trying to hold everybody else accountable. And I think their leadership is awesome for our team right now. And Jade, for you, this is your last go around and you have one year with this staff. What mentally, how have you kind of approached that? Um, I'm already kind of sad that it's my last year. I mean, we are too, by right, right. <laughs> I'm already sad that this is going to be my last year with this coaching staff. Um, I really appreciate the intentionality that they've brought to the program and making sure, like Alex said, like we've gotten to know them, they're getting to know us and kind of just reemphasizing that although they may not have recruited us, that we are their players. All right, a couple of final questions and points from you. One of the things we talked with Coach Russell about was the schedule. And we're not going to see a whole lot of you guys at the beginning yeah. of the year. I think 10 of the first 13 games are away from the Robin Center. And quite honestly, this was a team that struggled on the road mm -hmm. last season. What's that approach going to be like for the two of you and your teammates to try and be more successful on the road? Um, taking it one day at a time, I guess. Um, focusing on the little things that we need to do every single day it's a process and we can't always look ahead towards the, the next game like we have this one we're looking forward to the next one now it has to be we're focused on this one we're going to keep our heads on this one and continue to you know get better i think the emphasis on whether it's a home game or a away game the goal and the mission for our team is the same and that's to win so i think you know even though we we might not be in the robin center too much in the beginning i think we'll be able to learn how to win on the road and then bring that same energy back to our home court. And then finally, I think you'll echo that comment. If I take it to an even bigger picture of just what it'll be needed to be successful in the Atlantic 10, you guys know a little bit about the competitiveness of this league. What will it take to be successful and get into the postseason? I think just grinding every day and being excited for the competition that comes um, with the A-10. I think our conference is very competitive and 
at, during this time it's just really exciting to think about what other teams are doing and what we're doing here to better ourselves and I just think overall when we get into conference play and even just the start of the season we're just going to have that competitive energy um, because that's something that's been really amped up in, within this past few months. Alex what have you learned over the last couple of years of A-10 play that can help you this season? Um, we definitely need to be able to finish out a game and close, close out the game really um, we can't go into halftime thinking, oh, we're okay. We have to come out with the same energy that we started with. So. Well, have great energy all year long. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Alex Parson, Jade Hines, Clark with us as our Spider Basketball preview of the upcoming Atlantic 10 women's basketball season. And don't forget the Atlantic 10 tournament. If you want to look ahead a little bit, first round games will be on campus sites, and then the quarters, semifinals, and championship game at the University of Dayton.